In this video, I'm going to show you how to build a YouTube comment animation for Final Cut Pro by using Apple Motion. If you're a patron, you can download this project and use it in your videos right now. This video was massively inspired by Casey Ferris on his DaVinci Resolve channel, so massive shout out to him. With that being said, let's get into it. Go ahead and open up Apple Motion. If you don't get the project browser, you can push Command, Option, and N. From there, we're going to select the Final Cut title. This will enable us to publish it over to Final Cut Pro. And in the top right hand corner, I'm going to use a 4K project and I'm going to recommend setting your duration to something like 10 seconds. After that, we can go ahead and push open. The first thing we need to do is delete the title background and type text here layers. From there, we're going to select our rectangle tool and just make it any shape. Jumping on over to the left hand side, we'll locate the inspector. And first thing we can do is set this to a dark gray color. After that, we can go over to our geometry settings and set the roundness all the way up to 50. Then finding the size parameters, I'm going to click this down arrow to expand it. You'll see that we have a width and height parameter. I'm going to recommend setting this over to 1500 by 450. From there, go on up to the top left and locate your properties and in here you'll see the position parameter. Right click on that and then select reset parameter and that will place the rectangle directly in the center. Next, we need to make it so we can bring in a channel icon. So to achieve that, we'll go to the very top and go to add object. In here, you'll see we have a drop zone. Now that we've added the drop zone, go on down to your rectangle tool, clicking this down arrow and select the circle tool. Get as close as you can to the very top of the screen, then click and drag and hold shift to make it perfectly symmetrical. We want this to almost completely fill up the screen without cutting off the edges of the circle. Going to the left hand side, we'll locate the position, we'll right click on it and select reset parameters so that circle is directly in the center once again. After that, click and drag that circle directly on top of your drop zone. This is going to set that circle as a mask on this drop zone. So now we have that nice circular shape that you want for your YouTube channel icon. Selecting that drop zone, go ahead and set the scale down to something like 8%, then drag that over to the left hand side of our YouTube comment. Next, I need to bring in a few elements to really make it look like we took a screenshot off of YouTube. So I'm gonna push Command I and bring in this like and dislike icon that I took a screenshot of on YouTube. I up it inside of Pixelmator and deleted the background. I'm gonna have a link down below so you can download this icon for your own videos. From there, we can push import. Going to the properties, I'm gonna recommend you set the scale down to 15%. Of course, you can change that later if you're not happy with that. Let's go ahead and roughly get this into position just like so. Then we can scroll on down and locate our title tool. Clicking on that, go ahead and write in whatever comment you want. Let's go ahead and change the font. Now, if you want it to really look like YouTube, you'll want to use the Roboto font, and I'm gonna set this over to light. I'm gonna push escape to get out of the text editor and drag this roughly into position. After that, go ahead and select your text tool once again, and we're gonna create the YouTube handle. With that YouTube handle selected, let's go ahead and set the font of that over to medium. Selecting my arrow tool, we can go ahead and drag this also into position. Finally, we need to select the text tool one more time. We're just gonna type in reply, leaving it on that medium setting. Then I'll go ahead and just line this up with the like and dislike buttons. So now that we've done that, we need to start bringing some animations to this. Let's go ahead and select our drop zone all the way up to the reply text by holding shift, right clicking and selecting group. Let's just call this objects. For right now, I'm gonna go ahead and collapse that objects group and find our rectangle layer. Now I want this rectangle to expand out to reveal everything on screen. With that rectangle selected, go over to your properties and locate your scale value. We'll expand that and find the X value. Right clicking on that, we'll go down to add parameter behavior, then select ramp. From there, you'll see that we have a start value of 0%. The original value of X is 100%, so we need to negate that value. To do that, go ahead and set your start value down to negative 100%. You'll notice that it is completely zeroed out. But if we scroll down in our timeline, you'll notice that our ramp parameter is happening over the entire duration of our project. I want it to happen over about half a second. So with that ramp parameter selected, 
will go in about 30 frames. I'm gonna go ahead and push O and that's going to trim it down to that 30 frame mark. From there, we can go up to the curvature slider and drag that up to 100%. So now this should have a nice smooth curved animation. I'll go ahead and push play and we can see that popping out. Now it's a little bit hard to see it from the background. So let's go on up into our color render settings and set it over to transparent, which can also be achieved with shift T. So again, if I push play, we can see that animation happening. However, you'll notice that all of those objects we have on top of this rectangle are appearing before the rectangle is there. So we need to adjust for that by adding an image mask. Right clicking on the objects group, go ahead and select add image mask, which can also be achieved with command shift M. From there, go ahead and click and drag this rectangle directly onto the image mask. This is going to set this rectangle layer as a mask for all of our objects. However, you'll notice that motion by default has deselected this rectangle group. So go ahead and re-enable that. Now, if we push play, we can see everything appearing just as we want it. Finally, we need to have an animation at the end of everything closing back down. So to achieve that, find your ramp parameter and push command D to duplicate it. Scrolling down in our timeline, we can go ahead and drag this ramp parameter all the way to the far right hand side. As it is, our start value is negative 100%. So if I push play, everything is going to kind of reset rather than going to a close animation. Selecting our ramp copy, go on over to the left side and find the start value. Set that to 0% so it is no longer negating anything and we will set our end value to negative 100%. So now if I push play, everything will appear just like so, and then at the end, everything will close out. Now, I also wanna add in some nice animation to our text. Selecting our text layer, let's go up to behaviors, go down to text animation and select type on. As it is, the type on animation is happening over the entire duration of the project, so let's go ahead and shorten that down to about a second. Going to the second mark, let's go ahead and push O to trim that down, and now that will type on slowly. Next, we'll find our handle, go up to behaviors, go down to text basic and select arrange in. So if I push play now, both of these have a nice little animation happening, giving it just a little bit more life. I also wanna make it so this drop zone pops into place. So selecting our drop zone, we'll go to our properties and find the scale value. Let's go ahead and adjust this drop zone so it doesn't appear on the timeline until around here. So we'll just click and drag that drop zone to this point. After that, we can go into our scale value. We'll right click on it, select add parameter behavior, and I'm gonna select overshoot. I want the start value to be negative 8% to negate that 8% value we originally set. This animation is going to happen way too slowly, so let's just go forward a few frames and I'll push O. I want it to be a little bit more fluid, so let's go ahead and set our cycles down to just one, and we could lower the ramp duration to give it a little bit more power. Let's go ahead and push play and see how that looks. Another thing I love from Casey Ferris's YouTube animation was the nice little sheen that happens over the top, and this is super easy to replicate. Go ahead and select the circle tool, create a large elongated circle here on the left hand side. I'm gonna go ahead and drag the circle above everything inside of our main group. Then go into the shape settings, find the feather options. Go ahead and drag that feather way up, then take your fall off and drag that as far over to the right side as you can. You'll notice that that gives us this nice soft edge here. Going over to the properties, we'll find the rotation and set this to a negative 45 degree angle. After that, we can go ahead and drag this to the top left-hand corner and making sure we're on the very first frame of our animation, we can add a keyframe to the position. Let's go to the very end of the animation and drag the circle all the way down to the bottom right-hand corner. So over the duration of our video, we should have this nice little sheen happening across the screen. However, as it is, it's a little bit too bright. So let's go to the opacity settings and drop this way down until it's just barely highlighting our image. Next, we don't want any of this sheen to be happening off of our rectangle. So again, we're gonna right click on this circle, select add image mask, we'll drag in this rectangle, and again, we'll need to reveal it by clicking on this checkbox. So over the duration of our project, we should have this beautiful little sheen happening across the screen. And finally, I wanna go ahead and add in a drop shadow. So to achieve that, let's select the group that contains everything. Going to the left side, we'll find our properties and locate the drop shadow. Go ahead and enable that with this checkbox, then click on show, and we can go ahead and increase the distance and maybe increase the blur to get it looking as nice as we want it. Now, if you wanna make it so you have even more control over in Final Cut Pro, we could go to the right side, locate this down arrow, 
and select publish on any of the parameters you want to be able to adjust. So that could be stuff like colors, drop shadows, pretty much anything you can think of. Now the very last important thing we need to do before sending this to Final Cut Pro is to tell Final Cut Pro how long these animations should take place. As it is, if we drop this into Final Cut Pro and stretched out the duration of the title, it would really slow down our animation. So go ahead and find the end of your animation somewhere just past the second mark and push Shift M. That's gonna give you this green marker. Double clicking on that, we can change the type from standard over to build in optional. Now, if you don't really understand this, I have a whole video on this subject that I will link at the end of the video. Going to the last part of our animation, right before the animation starts at 929, we'll push Shift M and add that green marker and we'll change the type from standard over to build out optional. Now that we've done that, Final Cut Pro knows how long this animation should take place. From there, we'll go ahead and push Command S to save or to publish to Final Cut Pro, and we can rename this to whatever we like. After that, go ahead and throw it into whatever category you like. I'll throw it into my tutorials category. From there, I'm gonna push publish. To use this in Final Cut Pro, go into your titles and locate the category that you originally placed it in. I'll see that I have my YouTube comment right here. I'm gonna just drag this down on the timeline and you'll notice that it is a 10 second duration like we set up at the beginning. What's really cool with this is we can now just double click on our text and type in whatever we want. We can also change the YouTube handle to whatever we like. And if we wanted to, we could even bring in a channel icon. To do that, I'll go on over into my browser here on the left side and you'll see that I have a channel icon here. Selecting our YouTube comment, we'll go to the title inspector and locate this drop zone. Clicking on that drop zone, go ahead and select whatever image you want and push apply clip. Now you'll notice that it's zoomed in a little bit too far on this little channel icon. So I'm gonna double click on that and you'll notice that gives me some nice handles here. I can go ahead and shrink this down so it fits within that circle. And so finally, if we push play, you'll see that we have this beautiful little animation. I have a channel icon and I can type in whatever I want as well as having this nice sheen happen across the screen. If this video was helpful to you, consider press that like button, consider subscribing, and you may wanna check out this video where I show you the number one thing that every Apple Motion user should know. With that being said, thank you so much for watching and I cannot wait to see you in the next one.